Hello and welcome to day four again of reInvent 2021. I'm Rudy Chetty and we're really customer obsessed here at AWS. So we're joined by two customers, Scott and James. Say hi guys. Hey everybody. Hello everybody. Scott, let's start with you. What do you do? Uh, so my name is Scott Hurry and I am responsible for developer relations at a company called Blackboard. So just working with partners and, and clients who are building integrations with our products, all of which are hosted in AWS. Oh, awesome stuff. What about you, James? I am, I am a product manager at a large biotech company, and I am focused on, or I manage our managed cloud services all on AWS. Okay, and, and James, how has reInvent been for you? It's been great. It's been great to get out of the house and actually come and meet people and talk with people face to face. So yeah. I'm excited to be here. Oh, it's great to hear. What about you, Scott? Yeah, I, I, I think it's the same thing. It's just nice to get back to a little bit of sense of normalcy. Um, come see 20,000 of my favorite people and just learn and network and have a little bit of fun. Okay, okay, and has there been any sessions that you've been wowed by? Well, I think the, uh, you know, Werner's keynote this morning was, was pretty amazing. Um, I actually saw a pretty good uh, session on containerization and now that you've built a Docker image, what do you do with it? That I thought was really insightful the first day. Yeah. Um, so, all in all, it's been really good content. So you're saying you couldn't contain yourself in that session? <laughs> what about you, James? Any sessions you've liked? Yeah, so, um, you know, I thought I was going to be inundated with a bunch of kind of general sessions, but I, there was also some really good general sessions, but there, I was happy to see some, uh, some life science oriented sessions that were really more focused to where I was, uh, where I was focused today, so. Okay, happy okay. About that. And was there anyone you were excited to meet and did you get to meet them? Uh, no, I can't say that there's any specific person I was excited to meet, but I, I did get to meet hundreds of people here. So. Hundreds of people. What about you, Scott? Uh, so I'm still trying to meet Ali Spittle, who is now in charge of uh, developer relations for uh, AWS Amplify. Uh, I followed her on Twitter for quite some time, so it's like a Twitter celebrity, so hoping I can meet her before the day's out. Oh man, that's, well, you know, hopefully we can make that dream come true. <laughs> but is there anything else you're excited about as we close out reInvent the last two days? I'm pretty excited for a replay tonight. Um, I hear there's going to be dodgeball. Uh, I don't know if anybody likes Billy Madison, but <laughs> now you're all in big, big trouble. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, James? I, mean, I can't be that, but I would say that replay the same. I'm just looking to uh, close out the week and have, a, have some fun and head back home tomorrow. Oh, awesome to hear it. Well, thanks for joining us at reInvent, guys. And you know what, the crew here, we're also really excited. So let's take a look at some of the highlights before I run to back to the desk. and we're going to check out the fantastic demos. And I'm going to try to cut corners so I can speed up along the track. Now, you're basically trying to get your fastest lap time here. Uh, we can capture images directly through an active hurricane, or, or in the case of this, we can actually get an image of a volcano during a volcanic eruption. B-A, one, two, three. The British Airways flight to London is on time and scheduled for 5.30 p.m. I can also help you to carry your bag. Yep. Rudy, it's almost the end of the penultimate day here at reInvent. Oh, I wish I knew what, what that meant. I mean, it's Cl Clarissa, right? No, 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 Clarissa explains it all. It's Melissa, you ding that. <laughs> and the penultimate day means the big replay party is tonight, and tomorrow is the last day. I knew that. I'm just a bit muddled by this can of Werner ball. Werner handed me after his keynote. Werner has been on the keynote stage since the first reInvent. This was appearance number 10, the Strangler's T-shirt edition. <laughs> I liked how he reminded us things were like before, what things were like before AWS and the cloud premiered with S3 in 20, 2006, I should say. Man, I'm already in 2020. <laughs> <laughs> to see how things have evolved over time. And I think things started off, of course, if that innovation was constrained. Because before cloud, you either had to get massive investment, um, you had to buy hardware, you had to hire IT people. Things that had nothing to do 
they've actually built. And how much not just the cloud has grown, but the number of workloads AWS customers are running each and every day. Well, all these different instance types makes that you guys are doing a lot of work, really a lot of work. And that results in 60 million launches of EC2 each day. 60 million launches a day, that's insane, and it's just growing. And as Werner said, the cloud is extending into all the edges of the network, from factories to hospitals, agricultural fields, the bottom of the ocean, Antarctica, and the next frontier. What is the next frontier, you ask? Here's the answer from Werner and Payam Banazade, the founder and CEO of Capella. You know, what is the next frontier? That, that we really should be able to be addressed when you think about cloud computing. The next frontier that is now becoming accessible is space. In fact, to make truly global decisions based on global information, you need global access all the time. I thought you were the missing link, Rudy. What's so incredible about what Capella is doing is it is making satellite imagery accessible to anyone to explore any part of the planet, even New Jersey. <laughs> Shout out to my Jersey people and Taylor Ham and Cheese. Over the last six years, we've been designing and building some of the most sophisticated satellites on our planet. And these satellites have some magical capabilities. We can take images through the storm at night in all conditions. In fact, this picture of George Washington Bridge was taken three in the morning on a stormy night from space. New Jersey and New York from space on a stormy night. Sounds like the opener to a movie, right? <laughs> Payam's point, and it's consistent with what we've heard across the board this entire week, is that with machines helping us to access more and more detailed data, we can make better decisions in all kinds of scenarios. So let me just tell you a few stories from this year where machine operations led to humans taking better decisions. Oil spills were detected using our imagery automatically. Chinese dam failure was verified using our imagery automatically. Volcanic researchers identified new events by peering through the smoke of an ongoing eruption automatically. Local agencies were informed of deforestation in Amazonia automatically. And of course, during Hurricane Ida, our satellites were monitoring the daily progression of the hurricane and flooding through the clouds and storm day and night and pushing out updates in real time to our customers automatically and many, many, many more. Look, it's stunning that we are talking about accessing satellites in space with essentially a button click. I mean, I want my own satellite, and what would I call it? Maybe Zebra, or Melissa. Yes, <laughs> call it not, that. <laughs> not sure, need to think on that though. Werner has coined a term for this extension of cloud into space at the rugged edge, in your own data center and everywhere else. So if you think about all these different components of the cloud, yeah, and there's a spectrum of hardware and devices and services that expands the reach of the cloud way beyond regions and availability zones. Yeah? I have nicknamed this the everywhere cloud. Yeah? And, and customers will always want to manage their applications centrally, even though they're distributed. But you, know, you can push it out all the way over to the edge and where you can see all AWS services running transparently, regardless whether you're running it on the rugged edge, whether you want to run it, um, uh, close to your space satellites, or whether you want to run it in your own data centers. One of the highlights of Werner's keynote for me was the presentation of the Now Go Build Award. Now Go Build, as you probably know, is Werner's show on Amazon Prime. And the winner was Matt Coulter, a technical architect at Liberty IT and an AWS hero. Uh, Matt has done tremendous work for the community and creating really a truly vibrant community around the CDK. And he's gone way beyond just sharing his knowledge and learning. And as such, I would like to give you the Now Go Build Award 
as a reward for all the efforts that you've done. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Yes, Matt, congratulations. Very well deserved. He looks so dang happy hoisting that Now Go Bull trophy over his head. Another consistent theme this week has been sustainability. And Werner came at it from his CTO point of view. Developers have been trained to optimize for latency, security, and cost. And with what Werner announced today and the carbon footprint data Peter announced yesterday, we are pushing towards more sustainable architecture and a more sustainable planet as fast as we can. Okay. Well, we've been building technological infrastructures around the world that consume significant energy. And everyone should be aware of actually how much energy they are consuming. And so if you think about, I'm taking this quote from Peter from, uh, from last year, the greenest energy is the energy you don't use. So how to be more efficient and be more green at the same time. Now, there we can really make an impact because we can actually engineer there for sustainability and higher efficiencies in ways that are way beyond you would ever be able to do yourself. And I'm happy to announce today that there's a new pillar, which is the ADB as well architect, the sustainability pillar. That will give you advice. <laughs> that will give you advice about best practices that we've seen. And we'll continue to update the sustainability pillar as we get more and better insights into how to give you advice to build sustainable applications. We can all get behind that 100%. I like how Werner has this vantage point on where the cloud has been and where we are headed next. It's because he helped build AWS and the cloud from day one to this day. Looking forward, Werner describes the ability for everyone to build whatever they can imagine and apply the tools of the cloud. All the things we have seen this week here at reInvent to the world's most pressing problems like sustainability, like healthcare, and like food production. Now suddenly with AWS, you can build systems the way you always wanted to. There's nobody that tells you what you cannot do. There are no gatekeepers. Yeah? You can build the way you always wanted to build your applications. And it means you end up with applications that are fault tolerant, secure, scalable, cost effective, and sustainable. And that's really important. I call this, going back these 10 years, 21st century architectures. Well said. And Werner had one parting shot. Now, with this advice, I will leave you. I'll hope you see you guys tonight at the party with said. And with that, thank you, and now go build. Go build! And to follow Werner's other wish, let's get ready for replay. We're so excited for reInvent's biggest party. Rudy, that's it. This week and this live show has been great, and you were much better than I expected until you forgot my name. Oh, never again. Thanks for being such a spectacular co host. And for us from the live desk, that's a wrap. See you at Replay and at reInvent 2022. And also before we close, Rudy and I would like to say a special heartfelt thank you to the entire cast and crew of Live from reInvent. Oh, thank so you emotional. Also, I know, you're going to make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> thank you also to all the reInvent attendees and event staff. Again, as Rudy said, we look forward to seeing you at reInvent 2022.